Well, if you're anything like me, you're always just dying to know what kind of stone it is you're looking at in the cemetery. So that's what this episode will be all about. You may well consider this the genealogy of the gravestone. This episode is an overview of the majority of stone types you will find in your graveyards. Today you will visit a 200 year old quarry and explore evidence left by stone cutters of a bygone era. We'll also do a little stone carving ourselves. Lastly, we'll even show some tricks and some tips for gravestone identification. Hello, I'm David Gillespie and I'm a professional gravestone carver. Um, I've been carving gravestones uh, by hand since the year 2003 and I carve with the chisel and mallet only. Sometimes the easiest way to know what type of stone it is that you're looking at is to know the date on the stone itself. Uh, stones were very fashionable, if we can use that term, just like uh, fashions are today. Granite is the most common that we see now, so most gravestones from the present all the way back to the 1920s, most of those stones are going to be granite, like this one right here. So granite is an igneous stone. Uh, it's basically a volcanic magma that has cooled before it ever reached the surface of the ground. Uh, you can see that it has coarse crystals like these here. Um, in most cases, granite stones are almost always sandblasted, such as this one here. You can see that the letter uh, has a nice sharp edge, but down inside it doesn't have any dimension, so to speak. Here's how granite looks when it's just naturally cleft. Another thing about granite that's very helpful is it's very impervious to the weather. It's, uh, it takes a very high polish. As you can see, you can see my reflection in this piece here of black granite. Most granite stones these days are short and they're wider. That way they can accommodate two burials. So the next major stone type is marble. Marble is what we typically see the most of in these cemeteries. This one's a nice figured piece here as opposed to the gray ones you see back there. Um, marble is actually a um, metamorphic rock, and when I say metamorphic, it has a recrystallization of other disintegrated rocks over the years uh, that's been created with pressure and heat. Marble is mostly calcite. Here's a piece of marble in its natural state. Marble was in fashion and in vogue from the 1790s, up through the 1920s. So when you see a gravestone out in a cemetery that looks like this, in most cases it's gonna be a marble stone. And in a lot of cases, the type of marble has a lot to do with how long it holds up. This one is from 1859 and it's still in very good shape. So it's probably a, a pretty good piece of marble considering. Uh, a lot of American marble uh, just won't hold up a uh, inscription for as long as we would like for it to, sometimes less than a hundred years. The marbles that we see from Italy and from Greece typically hold up a lot longer. This is another local piece, probably from Georgia is my guess, and this stone actually was, I think, available from the Sears catalog from the late 1800s through the early 1900s. Marble was beginning to become fashionable in the 1790s because it was white and that was a refreshing look compared to the dark old slates of the 18th century. Now this marble isn't your typical marble. This is actually from Mount Pentelicon in Athens, Greece. This is the same quarry that the Parthenon was quarried from about 2400 years ago and I was blessed enough to get a piece of it to, to play with. So if you can pull in with a camera a little bit and see that the crystalline structure of this is much smaller and much tighter, let's say, than American marble, which is more like this. So this is American marble with large crystal structures. This is Mount Pentelicon marble, which has small uh, crystals. And this marble here will last maybe a thousand years or more, whereas this may only be readable for a hundred. Great.
to me, and now some succor send. Strike the light. So the gravestone material of choice, uh, in my opinion, is uh, slate. The um, the piece behind me is one that I've working on when I was a lot younger. Uh, slate was used as a gravestone material in the United States from the 1650s up to around the 1790s when it became not as fashionable when marble uh, became king of the gravestone material. So slate is a metamorphic type of rock. It has layers to it, uh, kind of like layers in a phone book, like it runs this way. And slate is um, very impervious to the weather. So slate gravestones were mostly to be found in coastal cities and places that they would import these stones on the ships. So uh, they would uh, carve the stones, let's say, in Boston and ship it all the way down to Charleston, South Carolina, or down to Barbados at times. Because slate has layers, that's how it is uh, quarried. It is sawn on the edges sometimes and then split or cleft. So in this case, the chisel, you can see the mark right here. The chisel would have been inserted right here, and then a sledgehammer would have struck it, and it would literally cleave that stone, and you can see the striations. As you can see this on the back of a lot of slate gravestones, they'll leave them natural cleft like that. So there's the impact spot right there. So in my opinion, slate is best for detail work, and... Uh, this is just a rough example of what you can do with it. This is nowhere near finished. But uh, this is what I prefer to carve with because I know it'll hold up for a couple hundred years. I tell clients that if this stone doesn't hold up for 400 years, you just bring it back. The next type of stone is one of my favorites, and it's a local stone that we have around here, is a soapstone. A lot of times you'll see soapstones carved like this with these uh, semicircle tops and square shoulders. Soapstone is also a metamorphic stone, and its content is a lot of talc. So the old timers around here would call soapstone talcos rock. It had a very a uh, high content of talc in it. Soapstone a lot of times will have these larger flecks in it. So you can see it's a green color, but it'll have these little flecks in it. They're looking kind of orange color here. So this is soapstone as it looks natural when it's just broken or split. It's a piece of Virginia soapstone with those um, Inclusions or little. Now this is a trick that I actually figured out on my own that for the most part soapstone if you use a magnet Soapstone will actually hold a magnet to it So it's there must be enough iron content in it to create this magnetic field So that's one way you can test out soapstone So to check ourselves, let's see if the magnet will stick to uh, granite. Well. Here is the local quarry of soapstone that was used to uh, fill the cemetery that we were just in. It's probably a mile, mile and a half away, but it's the exact same type of stone that fills that cemetery. And um, to me, it's just fascinating to know that 100, 120, 150 years ago, they were quarrying from here and cutting those stones into a rectangular piece, probably carting them with a wagon over the hills all the way across the river uh, and up to that cemetery site. So here we can actually walk out on a humongous piece of soapstone. They haven't quarried here for years, which is good, so that way the local people can get appreciation for what 
what it is and what is still here. You can still see way off in the distance in the mountains here. And there's still plenty of it here. So my guess is this indention in the land was probably stone and it had been quarried over the years. So here you can get a really good sight of a place that has been probably, it's probably been over a hundred years since this piece has been cut. But there are uh, chisel marks along here. And there is a gouged out nice trough right here where they were probably trying to lift this stone up to create another ledger stone or a tombstone. So here's a closer up view of this trough. Things like that don't happen naturally. That was done by human hand. And I'm not sure how long ago it's been, but it's been some time at least by the color. And it looks like up here they had drilled probably with a star chisel, holes along the way to try to then split it off. So this is at least 150, 200 year old soapstone quarry. It was used for gravestones and other things, I'm sure, steps and uh, lintel pieces for chimneys, fireplaces, things like that. And I know y'all are wondering, so here is the magnet, and there it is sticking to it. Another stone type uh, that you may see or hear about sometimes is what they call a field stone. A field stone is probably more or less a term that's like uh, jazz. It's a term that can be used to just cover a lot of uh, unknown. So. I really don't know what type of stone this is. It's not really granite, so I'll classify it as a field stone. Most cases of field stones like this hardly ever have letters carved on the front. So they'll just be either irregular shaped boulders or something like this. Uh, in most cases they were used by families that couldn't afford to have a gravestone carved or uh, had good intentions to come back and put one in but never could. Limestone is another type of stone for a gravestone. Uh, we don't see it a lot down south here, but up in Indiana I know there's a lot of it because that's where it's quarried. This is a piece of limestone I started carving a few years ago and never really finished it. It was just practice. But you can see it will hold a sharp edge and a nice line for a little while. It's just that um, limestone is so porous that it actually has a very high absorption rate of water so it's really because it's sedimentary it's not the best choice for a gravestone in my opinion here's another block of limestone and it carves very easily with a fork chisel especially um, I look at carving limestone like carving a piece of a cheese puff it's just so easy and fun to carve if you're doing larger things it's perfect for architectural works like fireplaces and things like that Red sandstone is another type of stone for a gravestone. You see it a lot up in New England, especially used. Uh, this is its natural look, which it just looks like any other rock. But when you chip it a little bit, you can see it has a nice reddish color to it in there. And I just did this last night to show that it will hold a nice sharp edge. But it's also sedimentary. And because it's sedimentary, it has a high water absorption rate also and will not last as long as we would like it to as a gravestone material. So if you like this video and videos of this nature, please subscribe. So this is just your local neighborhood gravestone carver, David Gillespie, saying uh, next time we hope to see you out in the cemetery.